नमस्कार वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ डायलॉग यू सी तरह फ्यू पीपल हुज वॉइसेस आर हर्ड इन आवर राज्यसभा लोकसभा इन आर पार्लियामेंट हाउस फ्यू पीपल वेरी फ्यू पीपल हैंडफुल ऑफ पीपल हैंडफुल ऑफ ऑपोजिशन इज वॉट आई एम ट्राइंग टू से हैंडफुल ऑफ ऑपोजिशन एंड I find it very interesting. I find it very enlightening when I speak to these opposition. Today, I have John Britters with me. John Britters doesn't need any introduction. Uh, a fine voice, a, a voice of reason, a voice that asks reasonable and important and pertaining questions in the Rajya Sabha. Have you ever seen? Now, the opposition leader was speaking about the presence of the Prime Minister. I was trying to dissect that. You know what is the presence of the Prime Minister in Parliament? 0.001%. 0.001%. So that is the that is the period in which he attend the Parliament sessions. Sir, I will just dwell on the preamble of it. So it speaks about say, what does it say? liberty equality and fraternity sir if you take justice you will notice that we have reached the bulldozer era that is justice now sir now another word sir democracy see many of the members think sir democracy has turned to be democracy or modiocracy <laughs> sir democracy or modiocracy because we don't see the prime minister I wanted to understand from John Britters as to how does he feel being an opposition MP. Is his voice heard? Is the way the parliament run fair? A lot of questions, interesting questions. Let's get right into the show. Mr. Britas, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for joining my show. Now tell me, I will directly start my question by asking you, how does it feel to be an opposition MP? Honestly, uh, I mean, my reaction uh, would be that uh, this is a time when uh, you need to be in opposition. Because if and all you are part of the treasury benches now, your only job is to, I mean, uh, uh, Clap your hands, stand on the desk, and have uh, a chorus, Modi Amit Shah. So uh, many talented uh, MPs uh, in BJP would say that, see, we are jobless actually. Apart from thumping on the desk, we don't have any major assignment. So I think that uh, I would prefer to be in the opposition bench at this juncture, because an ordinary MP in treasury bench is unable to demonstrate his capabilities as a parliamentarian, apart from thumping on the desk. Mr. Britas, you are you are the voice, you speak out, uh, and we have seen that. But does that make any difference? Does that actually change anything? And does that not frustrate you? This is actually something which uh, I ponder. Honestly speaking, many people ask me, look, what is the use in speaking out in parliament? Does it... Uh, help to salvage the situation, does it make any change in the approach of the government? But I can tell you, Sujit, honestly, there are a lot of people who test me, who somehow connect me and say that they are inspired. At least there is somebody, there are few people, at least they are vocal about what is happening in this nation. So, on the one count, maybe, uh, I may be having little despair, uh, thing is that nothing is changing, the country is going in the trajectory which obviously we, are, we don't appreciate. At the same time, I feel that there are so many people who feel that there should be voices which should be heard in parliament which would, in effect, inspire them to keep up the fight. So, this is a time when we need to have alien fights, agitation, and we need to resist this onslaught. And I feel that even this humble, feeble voice which comes from me is absolutely required, necessary, and uh, this is something which will keep me, uh, my cashment, 
uh, and a whole lot of people who wants to uh, dislow this code. So I'm happy in one way that you see I can be a voice for those people who are very feeble other ways. We saw opposition. We are seeing opposition from a long, long time in our parliament. And uh, uh, for instance, in 2012, in 2013, in 2014, even uh, before the election, we saw people, we saw Bharatiya Janata Party on the streets. Mr. Peters, tell me why? Why are opposition not on the streets like they were in 2014? Why can't today's opposition function like Bharatiya Janata Party opposition? Sujit, there are, uh, I would say, honestly, if I make an assessment, if you are on the street, this minority is seen as the right time for many people. I would say what? Because you don't have a government which is, in inverted comma, reasonable enough to appreciate the agitations, the struggles. Let us think about the farmers' agitation. I think uh, all opposition parties supported it. It, of course, it succeeded. But how many months, how many months they had to take? Only because it was a farmer's movement with ardent support from the community, from the state, from a huge catchment area, they could resist the onslaught. Otherwise, think about other agitations which have happened. This is a government which is unreasonable, which doesn't have any rationale, logic. I would say this government needs for an opportunity to crush Anything which comes out their way, that is one part. Second part, of course, I subscribe your view. This is a high time that opposition needs to be uh, for a battle, do or die battle. I do agree with you. I can tell you I am from Kerala and uh, only because of the persistent fight we take up to resist the onslaught of RSS, Kerala is insulated from so-called Hindutva uh, uh, bandwagon. Otherwise, Kerala also would have caved in only because of the persistent fight we unleash against RSS, RSS ideology on the street or an ideological platform. So, please appreciate on the one count, these are our very difficult times when the government is waiting for an opportunity to pounce on him and UAPA is a democratic sort. I mean, they don't have any compunction to put anybody behind the boss. You think about those people who are being castigated as urban Naxalites and uh, they are just dumped into the jail without any reason or logic. And at the same time, I do appreciate that if you want to salvage the democratic process of this country, the opposition needs to be on the street. It should be a do or die battle. And I fully appreciate that. Also, I would request you that, uh, please bear with me to say this, this is not the job of opposition alone to protect this democracy. There are other pillars, there are other verticals, civil society, especially with the media. I would say, except the opposition, opposition, you can say opposition also, may not have fulfilled the task which would have been cut off. Out. At the same time, other work, verticals, other pillars like media, when I, when, I, when I talk in terms of media, I talk in terms of the formal media, the media houses, they have completely failed this nation. Think about judiciary. Uh, do they have uh, succeeded in resisting this onslaught? I would say no. They would have caved in to many of the decisions of this uh, government without looking at the uh, rationale of that decision. So I would say when opposition takes it upon themselves, the blame of not being effective enough to checkmate this bottom slot. At the same time, we should also think about the mass failures of other institutions, especially other verticals and other pillars of democracy. Now, let me make a confession, uh, Britas here. Let me make a confession. You see, we media guys are, we are very scared. We are in one corner, we are sitting there because, you know, if we talk, we are raided. If you are, you know, and we are, we are in one this thing, whatever they say, we agree, we listen. So, look, so that confession I made. Now, tell me, is the opposition also equally scared? Completely, Sujit, I will tell you one thing. Uh, see, uh, I have seen the parliament from press gallery, from outside, from close quarters. Now I am part of the parliament since I am a member of the uh, Rabi Sabha power. I have never seen a time like this when opposition members, many in the opposition, 
are absolutely frightened, paranoid to take on this guy. Let me just uh, confess. Yes, the so-called developer sort of agencies, so-called, I would say, the witch hunt, so-called persecution, so-called actions are scared in your position also. So, uh, this has an effect. I would say it percolates down the parliament too. Don't think these politicians are, uh, I mean, powerful enough to uh, take on uh, these mighty people. No, they are also gullible like uh, many of us, many of you. And uh, they are also naturally targeted. See, you, you should see the way in which the politicians are targeted. Despite that, I would say there is a spark which is there. There are people who are consistent in their fight against this onslaught. A very possibly uh, a very disheartening and uh, a very negative question. But I'll ask you, why are you going to the parliament? You see, you are not allowed to speak. What a drop of a hat you are suspended. If you, even if you speak, uh, you know, it doesn't make a difference because at the end of the day, I think most of the bill takes two minutes, three minutes, four minutes to clear. That is what we have seen in the last, especially last uh, five years. So why do you go to parliament? What difference are you, are you making? Uh, I, I mean... This is a very relevant question which uh, I do ask. <laughs> I am also aware of this question. But uh, when the demolition of institutions are rampant, when every institution has been completely devastated, this is the only institution at least which attracts some public uh, uh, attention. And we can little space I would say we somehow navigate little time and little space to express our opinion. And you are absolutely right. Sometimes I feel that is it worth for people like us to, I mean, have this fight on in the parliament for three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. I can recollect that you see five minutes I take. There could be interruptions and uh, interventions. I won't say intervention because intervention is possible. In the Russia, interruptions from mighty people like cabinet ministers. I mean, who, who doesn't, I mean, even consider an opposition member's, MD's candid uh, uh, assertion. They will not be, I mean, uh, tolerant enough to allow you to have a free seat. But even then, nevertheless, I would say that at least let us keep up that. But government is not in a mood to even allow that. I would say that on JNK bill, I spoke for say four minutes or five minutes. My time was five minutes or four or five minutes. In the five minutes, you know who all intervened or who all interrupted? You had none other than the foreign minister of this country, Mr. Amit Shah. Twice he intervened. You had none other than the finance minister of this country, Shemarindra Mala Sivaram. You had Mr. Piyush Goy. You had another minister of state, which I don't count. That is Vimur Kridhar. See, in four minutes, five minutes, which was allotted to me, there were four interruptions and three of these inter interruptions were, or interventions, let me, let me be positive on their part, were mighty inter interventions. This is the format of the parliamentary discourse now. And again, coming to the bills, Sujit, I completely subscribe to I am part of the IT standing committee. Uh, which has got uh, IT, information, broadcasting, electronics, telecom, everything. You know, two important pieces of legislation, digital data protection, then the telecom bill. None of these bills were vetted by the IT static committee. These are far-reaching implications on the right of a citizen, which would even uh, cover generations to come. Now, those bills which were passed that we were suspended, Mass suspension, and, uh, like mass burial. It was like a mass burial, I would say that. 146 MPs being suspended. Three criminal bills were uh, passed. Telecom bill was passed. Postal bill was passed. Press registration bill was passed. How many bills were passed? Even this election commission appointment bill was passed with the deliberation. And you know what is happening in this country. Can you, ever, can you spell those three criminal bills? I can say BNS. Apart from that, I don't know what are the bills actually, which has got thousand clauses who have been passed without any due diligence or due deliberation. So you are absolutely correct. But from your angle, it's waste of time. You people are, are wasting the time of the uh, parliament, the nation, energy, 
Bani resources absolutely correct. But think about the situation. You are aware of this crisis because at least something is happening in Parliament. A full slinker is happening. Even if that is doused, what what could be the condition of this nation? So I agree with you to the night to the extent of ninety percent, but ten percent we don't have any other way because this is the only way in which we need to keep up our fight. Tell me, this new parliament and all this huge, they say twenty thousand crores, some say eleven thousand crores, some say nine thousand crores. This huge parliament house, how does it feel? Is it very comfortable and all of that? I mean, you know, it's nice. It's it's uh, shingle and all. Can see it. You can see the shingle and all when you sit in the parliament. I mean, uh, first hand view. So just let me just tell you one thing. Uh, I think I recollect I participated in a conclave of India today. That's in Chennai. It was that BJP when he was the first leader, Anandali. Then I was telling him, your own leader. Sardar Patel did away with all this shing shengon, simhas, and clowns and cowls to make sure this country is a modern country. Everything which was bumped by Sardar Patel, you are bringing it one by one by one. Shengon has come now, and you have so many clowns in the parliament now. Now you will have a crown already. You have a crown there, and oh, everything is there now. And let me just tell you about this parliament. You talked in terms of this cost or expenditure that has been involved in the construction of the parliament. First of all, I don't believe in the fact that you see construction of a structure is not construction of process. If you bury a process and construct a structure, how it is going to help the nation? So the parliament discourse, the process has been buried, whereas the erect a structure. See, that is a habit of Mr. Modi. That happened in, I would say, in Nazi Germany also. A new chancellery was built or constructed by Hitler when the entire process was demolished. Please bear with me for being literal. I would say, rash or tough or that. But coming to this, I asked two questions with regard to the construction of parliament. My question was that, what is the total expenditure incurred in the construction of parliament? I didn't get an answer. You know why? The explanation was that it is under the purview of the speaker. All right. It was the union cabinet's decision to construct this new parliament. Your money, my money has been spent. Where will I go? Which door will I knock to get a response with regard to the expenditure incurred from your money and my money? This is the hapless situation of the transparency in this country. Now, coming to the actual structure, I am one person who believe that this is something like a, I would say, I was uh, sarcastically committing that many of members mistook this uh, new parliament uh, house as a Lulu Mall. Earlier when the construction was going on, people were thinking a Lulu Mall was put in there. See, these are all, I'm, I would further go, this has actually become a gas chamber. This doom parliament is a gas chamber. I don't even think that even a single BJP MP is happy with this new parliament. Many of them tell us in private, this is a sheer waste of money. And you know what has happened? And there is one reflection of the mood of the nation in this parliament too. There is complete segregation. You people are segregated. See, earlier when the parliament used to adjourn or we can go and uh, meet in the Sandra Khan. I used to be a Sandra Hall member when I was a journalist too. Now, I mean, in the protest of COVID, they drove away the journalists from, senior journalists from Parliament Sandra Hall. Even when the MBs used to sit there together. Now, there is nothing called a Sandra Hall. The government doesn't want anybody to have a meaningful dialogue or a conversation in this country. So, the new Parliament building, the structure, the arrangement, he is absolutely a manifestation of the idea or the ideology of this government. So people are segregated. No Lok Sabha MP can have an opportunity to meet the Raj Sabha MP. There are multiple lodges. You can see MBs, 5 MBs, 6 MBs, huddled in one corner, other corner. Nobody knows what is happening. Even the cabinet ministers, I will tell you, a couple of cabinet ministers also shared their agony with you. They said, look, it's a wretched place. I'm telling you, what is the I'm telling you? I have not spoken about this to anybody. For the first time, I'm opening my mind. And there is nothing called 
an open space there. The once you are inside, you are inside the gas chamber. See the former parliament or the old parliament. See, if you feel little, uh, I would say, tired or fatty, you get to the first floor, take a stroll on that long veranda, take a round, you're completely fresh. There is nothing like that. So, the discourse in this country is being manifested in the form of the structure that has been put up there. This is what has happened. And further, you know what is happening there. And one more thing I will tell you. The media, see, on one pretext or one, uh, I would say, one reason, see, the media is completely being taken out of the loop. Now, there are few instances, spaces where the media can catch up with the AP stuff. The parliament, God, even this so-called breach of security uh, which has happened in the parliament has been used as an alibi to keep the media away from the parliament or from parliamentarians. Unless the so-called second media, second pillar of this nation interacts with the fourth pillar of this nation, how can you make this so-called democratic process a meaningful one? This is the real plight or this picture of the new power. So I, I can add you one thing. There is an understanding among, there is an understanding amongst the so-called India parties that if at all BJP is water out of power, we will go back to the world power. Is that a decision? Is that a decision taken by India Alliance? I don't think anybody will dispute that. Anybody will dispute that. So, 20,000, the, the reason I asked you about this 20,000, 7,000, 9,000, because I am, I am aware that you, you were the person who asked that question. And I also, I think my channel aired it and you didn't get an answer. I was aware of that. That is why I actually asked you 20,000, 9,000, 7,000. We get so many figures about the, the cost of the parliament. But that being said, that I will tell you one day, the media also is a culprit in obfuscating things in confusing the people. I can tell you one instance. See, uh, see the, the so-called explanation for constructing a new structure, new parliament, was that the, so, uh, the, the new old parliament is a colonial structure which has been built decades back. So, you don't have the convenience. The nation has grown. Everything has grown. Wrong. Absolutely wrong. The beta has been misleading. You know why? After this oil parliament was constructed, three complexes came up in addition to the old parliament house because to add jack of facilities for the parliamentarians. One, parliament annex. Second, parliament annex extension. Third, the huge library complex. Three complexes were built to actually, actually add facility to the parliamentary discourse. Most of the committee meetings happens in Parliament Annex or Annex Extent. Even now it happens like that. Even the activity in the new Parliament, new Parliament House would be hardly 10%. 90% of these things happen elsewhere. So the so-called explanation which was given to the uh, media or the media which told out this explanation. Look, it came in British period. Naturally, you need to expand it. No, in Indian period, as recent as 10 years back, you constructed huge complexes. What was it for? What was it for? Ridiculous propositions were served. John Brittus, his voice was heard, suspended. Derek O'Brien, Derek's voice was heard, suspended. Mahua Moitra, voice was heard, suspended, a case going on. We will talk about her later on. I need some five minutes with you on her. So, we will talk about her later on. You tell me, were you guys mischievous that day or you were trying to do some mischief in the this thing? Is that expulsion fair or that uh, suspension was fair? Like, my, my apologies. Yeah, I will tell you what thing. There is a narrative that is uh, created in this sketch. Narrative which is being uh, bought over by the so-called formal media houses too. My 50% of the time is been spent to him in fight the former media, trying to convince them, tell them where they are wrong, how they are uh, how they don't understand the reality. See, there is the narrative that is being brought in now is that, it's a pure narrative, I'll tell you what. India became an independent country in 2014. This new India, 
got a new parliament in 2013. Me, when this Shimon was brought in here, in Star. This is the narrative. See, have seen many more ruckus situation in parliament. And the two charges which have been raised against me personally, I've been suspended for three, three months. I don't know what for. One is that I held a placard in my hand. Second, I raised slogans. Just rewind the video of the Sansa TV, uh, maybe 10 years behind. How many placards have been held in the BJP bumpers? How many black banners have been right up there? How many bills have been torn up there? How many parliament sessions would have been washed off because of the mayhem unleashed by BJP? And even in this new parliament, I am just saying it with authentic information. I am not just bluffing. Even in this new parliament, none other than the Parliamentary Affairs Minister Prahlad Joshi raised slogan, something like Tisra Bar, Modi Bar, Tisra Bar, Modi Bar. Was it the racing slogans, which was a chorus of the BJP members? So what is this, this distinction that is made? What is the distinction? Are placards and slogans new to the parliamentary discourse? You had much more violent situations. You had a you had an occasion when you could uh, witness uh, uh, MPs from uh, Andhra Pradesh. Uh, uh, I mean, having uh, uh, obviously spraying uh, <laughs> pepper, pepper spray the house, pepper spray was used in the parliament. How many occasions you had in this parliament? So all of a sudden. Something is brought up saying that you need to have discipline. The new parliament warrants people to be supposed to be silent spectators of what is being talked about by the home minister or the prime minister. At the same time, you are not allowed to ask a question to the prime minister. I just uh, narrated uh, something about the uh, statistics uh, of uh, time speak being spent by the Prime Minister in house. It was like uh, 0.001%. How much time the Prime Minister dedicate for the power? Has he answered one question during the question hour when his departments were involved? You know, Sujit, I'll tell you, well, in Lok Sabha, Dadi Sabha, uh, one day, I mean, one, one hour question hour, uh, Prime Minister's departments are also coming for uh, discussion. I mean, for questions like the Department of Space, Science, etc. Earlier, the Prime Ministers who used to be at the helm of such departments, they used to get up and respond to members when the serious questions come. Of course, there are principal state to answer that, but as in practice, the Prime Ministers used to sit through that question hour because their departments are being uh, handled in that on that particular day. Have you ever seen Mr. Narendra Modi getting up and uh, responding to a question regarding the departments which he had? This is a time when Prime Minister and Home Minister thinks it appropriate to go to the television studios or the media houses to respond to the questions which are raised on the floor of the house. Have you ever seen such a precedent when the house is on such a The Prime Minister and Home Minister spends so much of time so that uh, they respond to the charges or the questions of the opposition outside the presence of the parliament. You had a very funny situation when the prime minister comes to the compound of the parliament and responds to the media with regard to the burning of Manipu. Why couldn't he enter the parliament, come to his seat, just stand up, two minutes he addressed the members? Why didn't do that? Come. This is a scant respect. These people show to the parliamentary democracy in this country. They can't stand the parliamentary democracy and that's why they brought in Shengol. Shengol, I will tell you, is an indicator. They don't want a parliamentary democracy, they want a monarchy in this country. That is a clear point. Is a parliamentary committee and all still there? Uh, do they operate? Is there anything that happens there? <laughs> Are bills, does bill no. go to parliamentary committees? No, I, I, I'll tell you, uh, I told you about my parliamentary standing committee. It was a very important committee. Uh, actually, I opted for this committee because it's uh, happening 
committee it deals with uh, the emerging uh, issues of the uh, world big tech companies social media everything comes under that it is very important but i just saw totally two important piece of legislation which is concerning this property didn't come for a uh, uh, perusal in the committee i'm talking about digital data protection and uh, uh, this thing which one uh, telecom bill and these two have so much to do about the privacy of the uh, people and uh, the telecom bill i will tell you the letter and spirit of the 2017 puttasaami verdict has me completely troubled away it's a blatant violation i would say the supreme court the verdict has been completely bunked and there are instances wherein i studied all these bills i would say three criminal bills telecom bill everything i can tell you you know what is the underlying factor of all these bills taking away the powers of the citizens to the state state is being impossible you can see you can see a pervasive state machinery everywhere the liberty of the individuals the threat which is connecting all this piece of legislation the three criminal bills postal bill press registration bill telecom bill any bill which you would have seen which have been passed by this window session the underlining conduct of these bills are so called amassing the bubbles in the state this is detrimental to any liberal democracy which is being envisaged by the constitution and in the pretext of sovereignty of this nation security of this nation safety of this nation friendly relations with the other countries you know why unbridled powers are being given to the state mistake to the police from a civil administration it's been completely switched over to a police administration and such bills earlier there was a practice when you give powers to the state machinery when you amass such powers even this bill would be having clauses provisions of safeguards but i can tell you stunningly this piece of legislation which have been passed do not have any safeguard in the sense you don't have any measures to protect the liberty personal liberty of the citizens in this country i'm sad to say that and you know what was the explanation given by the home minister in regard to the election committee shai stotter but asked him many a time she said that how can we involve how can we involve who the supreme court chief justice to the process of a selection are right? don't you i mean election commission is much more significant important than cbi right because the whole process of uh, democracy is on the pedestal of election commission election right even for the appointment of the cbi director you have supreme court chief justice or his domain there but for election commission you find it to be completely over let us can i ask you a question uh, there is a, no, there is a there is a chief justice there is a prime minister of india there is a chief of opposition to appoint the head of cbi do you think cbi is independent see despite that cbi is not independent despite that so think about the situation when even that safeguard is not there <laughs> so you are absolutely correct you are reflecting my voice when you ask me that question see so you know that only one thing what 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 is the basic tenet of a democracy parliament democracy basic tenet of a parliament democracy is that executive is accountable to the people fight perfectly without that you cannot have a parliamentary democracy you cannot have a functional parliamentary democracy and on the other count the mps are uh, accountable to the people this is the chain of uh, action even the bjp government will they will never say that they are accountable to parliament can carry even the prime minister will not say that because he would be ashamed to say that because is uh, i would say his ego will not permit him that's why he doesn't come to the parliament that's why he doesn't respond to members that's why he doesn't want any issues to be raised there which warrants his reply and now further i will tell you one day when you talk in terms of cbi not being independent think about the other verticals sujit think about this third pillar of this country supreme court you can't criticize the judges but you can criticize the judges i can tell you one thing i diligently went to the so called uh, provisions or rather so called uh, aspects of the wording which came in 370 
cat uh, that uh, three uh, abrogation of three seven three. It's I will tell you, the Supreme Court verdict would have serious consequences if an authoritarian government government wants to dismiss the Supreme Court verdict. Nothing can nothing can stop them. You know why? A drop of a hat, you can convert a state into a unitary. That is a sum and substance which should be derived from the three seventy. They have not conclusively opined about that, but they have opened this Pandora box. Here is a situation when constitution is very clear about the role of the governor. Despite that, you have seen governors acting as hitmen for the government of India. On the one count, you speak in terms of cooperative federalism. On the other count, you unleash these people to create backup, to disturb the administration, to topple the government. See, this is happening. So, can a Supreme Court think about giving such a ventilation to a government which have the tendency of authoritarian streak? Why is the Supreme Court is oblivious about that? Why the media is not writing about that? I have not seen a single editorial in any of the national media with regard to this so-called disastrous impact which this could lead to. Uh, what is your opinion about what happened with Mahua Moitra, the expulsion? Do you think it's fair? And also, one question that a lot of common people would like to know, does MP share their uh, password and ID at times because in their office, their secretaries, do they share? Does that happen normally? I wrote a piece for Indianapolis on this Mahua, uh, Mahua gate. Let me just start calling it like that. <laughs> I asked a question. See, now you can see jilted lovers, jilted lovers, Carrying patrol cats to <laughs> pour on your so called X and light files. It's a normal scene everywhere. But can a parliament be a tool? Can it light the fire for such a process? You've effectively done that. This is a personal battle between Mahua and her ex. You can question her uh, for her prudence of picking up somebody as uh, her boyfriend. I, can, I even told her also, Mahua, uh, I mean, one area where you are first heard is that you have picked up somebody uh, wrongly as your partner. She agreed also. But otherwise, look at it, Sujit. I just completely went through that. The layers of the charges that have been, uh, I mean, leveled against. So, Logging I, I can tell you, I am a member of parliament. My secretary logging, my another PL logging. I also do it, but I can tell you, 70 percent of the MBs in Indian parliament now may not have logged in on themselves. 70 percent of them would be laying what others. Even those 30 percent who would be logging in, they would be laying on others too. Because when I am busy, when I am traveling, I would be asking my secretary to log in and I mean, put, post a question there. Right? Now, if I told the parliament had drawn up a protocol, practice, guidelines, instruction as to how to deal with this portal, I would have gone by that fight. I asked a question again, which was disallowed. I asked a question, is there a protocol guideline, direction from the part of the Parliamentary Affairs Minister, Ministry or from the part of the Speaker or from the part of the Raji Sabhasar Charban with regard to the protocol that need to be upheld while looking. With the loud. I cannot answer the question because I know there is no protocol. So, how can you charge a member? And second thing, see, suppose uh, who is that? Darshan Hiranandani is a close friend of you. But what is wrong in there? You asked, asked his office uh, uh, assistants to log in. What is wrong in there? Does it mean that you see uh, Darshan Hiranandani or somebody in Dubai, just, just because he happens to be somewhere, he cannot be uh, used as a uh, uh, help or assistance to I mean, Logan? 
Otherwise, she should have brought it there. Any login that should be done to the parl parliament uh, uh, website or uh, say this portal should happen inland from India. If you are paranoid about any foreign forces, foreign countries, naturally that is what is we talked about now. Okay, he should have told. No, 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 you can only log in in this country. And you can only rely on those pop people who are living and staying in Delhi. Okay, perfect. I agree with that. How can you charge it? And second thing about the gifts, I asked one more question. I can ask you this question. Is there a member of parliament who can claim that he hasn't or she hasn't obtained what a gift? Can anybody claim that? All right. You, you, I mean, the newspapers and television was going along with the uh, news items of uh, uh, Prime Minister auctioning the gifts he got. All right. Uh, that means he got the gifts too. If he hadn't bought the gifts, how could he auction it? So, till the auctioning was he guilty about it? <laughs> till the auction was he guilty about it? Like, come on, Elon, what, what are strange logics? It's like you have the target, <laughs> you load it, fire it. If you want to yes, spell Magua or anybody or me, or, we do it here, yeah, but please don't bring in such ridiculous prepositions. It's against the common sense of the common man. Please don't do that. You see, for a lot of my non-Malayali viewers, uh, people who are viewing from north, uh, the man sitting next to me is a is a superstar in Kerala. You, your 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 television programs are 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 phenomenal in Kerala. JB Junction is a huge program. I think uh, it's a very very interesting program too. Yeah, you had all of this. Why did you get into, into politics? Why are you getting expelled? And what was all this? What made you come into politics, John, on a serious note? What made you come into politics? I'll tell you, I'm very happy to hear something good about uh, JB Jackson. And one more thing, I'll tell you one thing. I, I get good news about or good things about my program or uh, uh, my so-called uh, uh, job or assignment uh, more from outside Kerala than from inside Kerala. Uh, I can tell you that. Anyway. But uh, let me just confess, look, everyone, they are political. They have a political perspective, political ideology. Even those people who say that they are apolitical, absolutely, that's a wrong thing. When somebody says that he is apolitical, trust is part of the system. He wants to protect the status quo. Nothing, but nothing you, so you sacrificed a glamorous career uh, for uh, for politics. I, I don't have as a you a, a, a super glamorous career for politics. That's the question I'm asking you. Uh, I don't think I would want, I would never say I sacrifice. I tell you that I'm glad that I got an opportunity. My party chose me to be that survive. And I can also tell that uh, more than a journalist at this stage. It began to morph for the society. I'm feeling it. It's not to the expected level, I can tell you one thing. But I can help a lot of people. I can raise a lot of topics which are relevant to the society. And I also feel that those people who are in other fields, like say professional fields, media, corporate, they also should join politics. You know why? If you need to have people to come to politics, the politics should not be completely segregated for few people. I mean, something like that. And I always say that Paralika uh, Admito, they would have to join politics. You know why? It's as simple as that. See, now there is a tendency to make convert people up political. It's wrong. See, the, I'm a product of the campus. I'm a product of the Kerala society. Kerala society made me the character. And I feel that I need to keep, give back something to the society. Why I talk so loud, so much about protecting secularism is because I am a huge beneficiary of this egalitarian values of the secular society. If there was no secular society, if there was no egalitarian values, I would not have been there at all. So if I have hugely benefited from this very benign society, I need to give back something to the society. And I feel that Politics is one trajectory which gives you so much of opportunities, ample space to return something to the society which has contributed for your group. What a pleasure talking to you, John Brittis. What a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Sujit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, we very soon. You allow me to speak.
at least stay ahead with our cutting edge news app instantly access the latest shorts in just 1 minute and breaking news in just 50 words download now for a smarter faster news experience